Yep, the, the boss that has ended our run <laughs> numerous times. No, I, well, he might have been stuck on the wall, but I, I don't think so. It's possible. It is certainly possible. Like, if I was right against the wall and I try to roll through it, then the boss will turn. Um, I think... I don't know, man. The The biggest the biggest issue there is just... I, I, I didn't realize that you could just get... The, uh... You get that immediately. Like, that's pretty insane to get immediately, dude. But... Uh, Millennium, thanks for the bits, dude. Yeah, that's that's too bad. Yeah, and the reason what makes that attack even worse to dodge is that mid attack there's a lag spike that happens it's not a lag spike but the noble like literally freezes for a you know a few frames and it that totally like messes up the roll timing right so that's why the positioning you need to be at to roll through that initially is so precise is because of that freeze that happens and uh like or else you know what you could do is just run away like get really far away and then it's an easier time to dodge it because you know once the roll gets going, then the speed at which Noble moves is consistent the whole time, and it's much easier to dodge that way. But at the beginning, it's especially tough because, yeah, you get, you have to position yourself perfectly, and then it just, the Noble's like hopping around and stuff while it's rolling. So. Uh, Millennium, thanks for the 100, uh, 300 bits again, dude. Um, I'll probably do at least one more attempt today, depending on how it goes. Yeah, we had a few good runs today, but that one was... Like, that hit was definitely worse than the Elden Beast one, because... Yeah, I, I just rolled too uh, early, I think. Yeah, it'd be, it would be nice if they did fix that glitch with the Noble roll, though, because it, it actually would make it easier to deal with. Yeah, they, yeah, that's yeah, that's probably true. NFC. Hey, sir, but you, I can play turning to aid you. You need O to the foot. Then it's summon me. Ah, I bequeath. He did all some torrent. Treat him with. You just run. Well, like on that situ in that position, you're not gonna just run, right? Like, well, I I guess I could have, but like again, I I was not expecting that attack, so that was I guess the first mistake. I had no idea that Noble could immediately do it after doing the other inflation attack. Um, but yeah, there's the pillars on the side. Like you're you're not running on that most likely. Like realistically, you're not going to just like run in circle there. Best way to deal with it is just to get on top of the pillar. Which I could have done. Uh, but again, like I'm just... I didn't even know... I thought there was a cooldown. What I, what I thought was that there was a cooldown on... Not just the roll itself, but on any of those like inflation attacks. Like the roll and the, the big slam.
And so, yeah, basically, I, I wasn't in a good position to get to a pillar or, you know, even roll through it. Like, I was just in a really bad spot against the wall. But yeah, that being said, I mean, I, I should I should have still been able to roll through that. It's just I went too early. Well, it's, no, it's not a scuffed. Well, I, I mean, it depends how you look at it. I mean, there's a lot of active frames on Noble's roll, and rolling through it is tricky to do. Because it has so many, like, it's such a wide hitbox, and there's a lot of, like, there's, you know, the entire thing is a hitbox, right? So, so it's a tricky roll, but I, I mean, go, if you watch my Noble fight earlier, like the Volcano Manor Noble, from that run. Like, I roll through it several times and it's fine. It's just that one I messed up on. But it was because of, a like, a number of reasons which I didn't know about until now, so... Well, the main thing is that I didn't know you could immediately get the roll there and then... I guess, yeah. Just, I was in a bad position, so... Well, roll rolling through is fine as long as your distance is right. Because it's sometimes not fine. Like, if, if you roll, try to roll through Noble when the leg part of the roll happens, then it's not fine. But as long as you know that's a thing, and you're the right position, then it should be fine. As long as you're not against the wall as well, because the wall will mess it up too. Uh, we're just doing any percent for now, Cupid, but we'll do more content after I... Like, we'll slowly build up. Uh, the Apostle didn't come back because we got a stun when Noble tried to summon. So that that's that's the whole part of the strat, right? Like, that's why that fight works as it does. Is we get a stun. And then that just makes it a one-on-one -on -one fight. And then we do the same thing when Apostle comes back. And then we can just win from there. Yeah, both of them suck a lot, Raven, but... The, the benefit of the Volcano Manor arena is that it's flat. But they both suck, man. I would actually prefer the Volcano... Like, it's it's kind of hard to say, actually, because for the roll, Volcano Manor arena is probably worse. But for literally everything else, the Volcano Manor arena is better because it's flat. Like, being... Flat arena is very important on so many bosses, dude. It's a common theme. Bosses that have bad arenas, a lot of time they're not flat. Right, like Godfrey's or uh, Goldfrey's Arena, Fire Giants Arena, God's Can Duo Arena. Non-flat arenas are usually very bad. Uh, I'm about halfway there, uh, quintessential. Even Redan's Arena, right? Like, the whole... Like, at least there's some flat sections that I can use to fight them in, but if you're trying to fight them on the slope, it's horrible. Yeah, the Falling Star Beast. Yeah, it's... I, I don't know why. Like, I guess it... You probably can't have flat boss arenas all the time. But, it, man, is it annoying as hell. Red Wolf's Arena as well. Red Wolf of Radagon. 
Another one. Like, I, I almost can't even think of a boss arena that is not flat that is also a good boss arena. I genuinely can't think of one. Or at least, like, m the majority flat. Room in the genre for not flat arenas? I think, yeah, I think if they really put a lot of thought into it. Um, yeah, you could have a fight where the terrain plays a role, but not in like a bad way. But. These two gank fight? Uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, the arena at least allows you to do some stuff. Yeah, that's true. It's more just the arena suiting the boss, I think, is the big thing. And a lot of the time, they make some gigantic boss or some big enemy, and it's a sloped arena, and it just totally messes up the fight. Yeah, the design bosses for flat arenas, then give them slants and rocks. 100% yeah, that, I think that's true. 100% I think that's true. Master Run, Demon Souls, DS1, F3, Sekiro, Bloodborne, Elden Ring. I'll do that right after you. When you do it and, and learn all the strats and stuff and, and show that it's possible, then I'll do it after that. Let's go on Moses. Yeah, surely Capra Demons, uh, boss arena's perfect, dude. Yeah, in my mind, like, Malakath's arena is kind of, um, like, what they should be aiming for. If they want to make a boss have an interesting arena, don't add a bunch of slopes that ruin the boss and, and make it unbalanced, right? Because you design, like, just Fire Giants is the perfect example in phase one specifically where, you know, he's got his stomp attack, right? And he's got, um, he's got a lot of attacks that are, they change based on the terrain. So what that tells you is that they did not design his moveset around a sloped terrain. Or around having rocks in the fight and stuff. So that's like a bad interaction with the arena, but making it, making a boss like Malekith where, um, where it's, you know, it's still flat, but the boss still interacts with the arena in a cool way that adds to the fight. Like, that's what they should be going for. And so, so a sloped boss could work. But it hasn't so far. That's for sure. Oh, actually, yeah, I guess Wolnir's is sloped, and it actually works for him, so. That's true. That being said, there's still some issues, but. At the same time, though, with Wolnir, like, it's an angled arena, but it's still, there's not, um like changes in the terrain, right? It's all just, it's flat, but it's at an angle. It's not 90 degree, but there's not a bunch of obstructions in the way and stuff. Uh, the market fight is on a bit of a slope. Um, that is true. Which actually does affect some things, but yeah, it's not really a big enough slope to really 
Change anything? I'm trying to think of the... So, Gale has a sloped arena. But... I, I would actually say it works fine for Gale. Because similar to, like, the Redan arena where you can control the positioning. You never really want to be on a slope for Gale, but... You... Yeah, you can just, like, bring him to an area where it is more flat and then just fight him there. So... Very similar to Redan's arena. Yeah, Godric's sloped arena is on, like, garbage when compared... Like, when you combine his breath attack and stuff and all of his attacks, the slope does not work in that arena at all. It makes it way worse, actually. Uh, I got hit on uh, the Noble on Godskin Duo Disco. I got hit by the roll. Well, at least, you know, at least we had some decent attempts today, though. Both, both runs making it past at least Fire Giant, which is decent. And I, I do feel pretty confident on God, Godskin Duo as well. It just it was sort of an unfortunate situation, and then I kind of messed up, so. Favorite arena in any From game? I don't know about that. It could be. There's, they don't really make a lot of bosses that interact with the arena so well. Like, it's probably not my favorite in terms of how it looks, but in terms of what it adds to the boss, it, it could be my favorite. Every fight take as much prep as Duo? Definitely not. No, like, God's gonna do it. We gotta do this whole thing at the start to poison and rot kill them and then get our 1v1s, but all the other fights are just normal fights, basically. Like, from stage to dine because they don't care if they make something unfair or weird sometimes. Hmm... No, I think when you just look at the arenas visually, like Godric's arena, it's a really cool looking arena, I think. So they nailed that part, but you can't just forget about the actual fight part of it, right? Which they seem to do a little bit in this game. And I'm not just saying for the boss arenas, but even for the bosses themselves. Like they kind of sacrifice the quality of the, a lot of the fights for just making it either look cooler or, you know, just have more boss in the game and stuff. hours per attempt yeah yeah and it's not even it's not even just because the boss fights are way longer it's it's more because of the amount of setup we have to do there's a lot of running around picking stuff up more so than even just normal runs which is unfortunate Uh, nice Santu. If only I could say the same. That I beat Elden Beast today. Gameplay should be number one priority in these games. I, 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 I would agree, I think. I agree. Um, I consider doing Master Run in DS2, but it's, um, it's, like, kind of insane.
No arena is worse than Capra Demons in all Souls games. Well, yeah, it's it's a question of, you know, the the yeah the boss's interaction in the arena, like what, because the arena itself it it, de it all depends on the enemy you put in there. And they decided that putting dogs, the most annoying enemy in all Souls, multiple dogs with a boss was a good idea in a tiny arena with a staircase. So I, I would probably agree with that. I think it probably is the worst arena. If it was only the demon in there, no problem. That's, that's a totally fine arena. It looks nice. I like it. A one plus zero. Oh yeah, Smelter wouldn't be a problem, right? Because you got range and stuff. Honestly, what I got stuck on in, in routing the Master Run DS2, because I did do level 1 plus 0 no hit in DS2. Uh, what what I got stuck on was Skelly Lords, man. Or, so, NG plus 7. The, uh, the Shrine of Winter doesn't open for the same number of runes as it does on base NG. Like, it's not just a million. It, it goes up by, I believe, a million every NG cycle. And so, what, Journey 8 would be 8 million. I think it's something like 8 million. So that means you can't really just farm the rotten all day long. And you have to do all the old souls. I like realistically, you know, I guess technically you don't have to, but all old souls is the thing that makes the most sense. And uh dude, Ske skeleton lords, I just I don't even know how you do it. I just don't even know. And yeah, you, you like if you had enough aesthetics you could do rotten, but you don't you don't get enough aesthetics in the game to do it, so. At least I don't think so. So yeah, that's what's so tough about that run. Like, all great runes, no hit in DS2 is already very tricky, right? Because you're adding so many extra bosses compared to a normal route. And it's not even just adding extra bosses. Going through Harvest Valley, Mytha is very tough on SL1. Especially because usually in that point in the game, you don't have a good setup, right? In my old... Dude, I used to do something crazy when I did SL1 all bosses, no hit in DS2. I, I used to use the work hook on Mytha, which decreases your... It, so it increases your dex by, I believe, 5. But then decreases your ADP. And uh, so SL1, the, the Deprive class in DS2 starts out with... I believe it's 86 agility, which is 8 iframes. So that's so 8 iframes in 30 FPS. Compare that to a normal Souls game roll, that's 13. So it's 5 less. Which is pretty significant, right? A sixth of a second less iframes. Um, so yeah, that's pretty significant. And then once you get lower than 86, 85 is the minimum possible agility, which brings you down to five iframes. Like it's a huge jump at that point. You go from, like most of the increments are by one iframe. So you go like 86 to 88 is one, and then 88 to 92 is another one, and then 92 to 96, and then 99, and so on. But from 85 to 86, it goes by 3. And so the work hook increases your dex, decreases your ADP. So I, I used to fight Mytha with 5 iframes on SL1 so that I could use the Rapier for her. And the Rapier is way better than the Mace on that fight. But man, that's like a crazy thing to do, man. <laughs> Mytha 5 iframes. I, I definitely got hit a few times on that for sure before I got that run. But yeah, that's that's but that's what's so cool about SL1 and DS2, right? It, it forces you to be significantly better at the game, at rolling attacks. Like it's not just okay, now I know this attack, I can just roll it the same way every time I'll never get hit. It's like your roll has to be way more precise. Which I think is cool. I think that's a cool thing. And I I as a as someone who does challenge runs, I would like these games a lot. Like I think these games would be more fun to me if all the games had, uh, you know, you could control your iframes in a similar way to DS2. 
even though casually, I, I like, I don't think it's a good thing because you shouldn't really have to worry about that. But from a challenge perspective, I think it is a good thing. Oh, yeah, true. Thanks, Bender. Okay, let me uh, fix this, you guys. Okay. A little dark, but that's okay. So, so yeah, I think that's why I actually like I like how agility's done. I I think from a from a challenge running perspective, I think that's why SL one just doing like straight up SL one and DS two is by far my favorite. I almost don't even think it's worth me doing in any of the other games, just straight SL one with upgrades. But in DS two, it is. And, and yeah, you just like, it, it's a cool thing to have to just get more precise at what you already do to complete a challenge. So I do like it, but yeah, again, like for casual playthroughs though, um, like I, I don't even mind it for casual playthroughs. It's just that it, um, uh, it probably should have been more intuitive than it is, right? Like some arbitrary numbers that you increase in iframes that you can't even tell. That's the biggest problem, I think, with it. But even, to be fair, though, even even that being said, I'm pretty sure all the people that don't like controlling your iframes in DS2, which, like, probably most people don't, probably wouldn't care, like, no matter how it was. Even if it was explained properly, like, people would probably still just not like it at all, even though... Um, even though I do like it for challenge running, so... I, I don't like doing fat roll no hit runs, honestly. Not my favorite thing. Learn these two better. Would I recommend no upgrades? Well, I always recommend no upgrades over SO one. Doesn't matter which game. I, I, like, in literally all the games, I think doing no upgrades is better. Way to upgrade your armor? Uh, you can in, in the older Souls games. Yeah, I guess I guess one other thing that I do like about ADP and and you know the agility stat outside of no hit runs and challenge running is that it does lend itself to more build possibilities, right? Like first of all, it makes the game more skill based when you're deciding your build because for for example, if um I guess we'll we'll say for no hit runs like some some runners they will go up to on any percent they'll go up to 111 agility which corresponds to 14 iframes um which is more than a normal roll in the other souls games right so they they pump the extra stats sacrifice some damage and stuff so that they can get an easier roll but then others if you're you know if you're more skilled at the game uh and you want to optimize your damage output or your stamina or something you could go with I don't know like usually for my any percents I go 96 agility which is 12 iframes or, or sorry 96 is 11 or maybe i go 99 i can't remember but so i get a little bit less iframes but then i max out my endurance and all this other stuff and then i don't get to 105 until the very end of the game which i have just a bunch of souls to do anything with and so i like for build possibilities it's kind of nice and and say and and obviously like ds2 since it has the other stat another stat included the uh the like actual souls per level up cost is reduced to compensate and uh and so that means like yeah if you're not needing to roll like say you go for a pure tank build 
Um, yeah, so you're going for like a pure tank build or something and you're just never going to roll. You just, you, you get a bunch of extra levels to put into other stuff. So I like that part of it as well. Yeah, 99 is 12. So I think I think I either I either went 96 or 99. I can't remember exactly, but to determine if you had it seems torrent, whereas I there is, but I can take gathering. And yeah, to me the biggest issue like the most glaring issue with that system that I think is bad is the the fact that it's so arbitrary and it's not explained anywhere in the game. Like if you hover over and get help on the agility stat, it'll tell you it increases your rolling invincibility. But like, what does that mean? Like you don't know the numbers. You don't know what's a reasonable amount. Like so that I, like if, if they fix that, I think overall people still wouldn't like it for sure, but it would... I'm sure a lot of people would be more okay with it, probably. Even if they didn't like it. So, so yeah, that being said, if, if they ever make, like, a DS2 remake or something, which I think would be... I think out of all the Souls games at this point, it's the one that... I would like to see remade the most. If they ever did do that, I would love to see them... Ch not change how the system works, but just make it more intuitive. Like instead of having some agility stat which does a whole bunch of things, just like put iframes on there and explain what iframes mean. And like just make it obvious, and I think already that's a lot better. Some animations make bosses immune to stagger damage. Um I can't think of anywhere where that's the case, but. If you mean some animations prevent bosses from being staggered, that is definitely true. That's why Millennia is such a bastard. Because she has so many animations during her dashes where she has hyper armor and she cannot be staggered out of it. And so what, what ends up happening when you... Like, you can watch my poise video I made a long time ago. But what happens when a, a stun gets eaten when an enemy is in like hyper armor what happens is as so, so as soon as an enemy gets to zero poise like normally when they would stun or zero or negative poise um they should stun but if they don't if they eat it then the game immediately tries to refill the stamina or the poise bar so normally there's like a couple seconds of delay before the poise bar starts to reset and it depends on the amount of poise that the enemy has um, so, so yeah, there's like a set amount of time, but once they get to zero or lower, then it immediately starts regenerating. And so that's why, that's why Millennia like never staggers sometimes, right? Because if you're hitting her constantly during her hyper armor, she will constantly be resetting her poise and like regaining it. And the, yeah, like poise overall regenerates at like what, 13, 12 to 13 poise per second. And so, yeah, so you hit her when she's, you know, in hyper armor. She goes to negative poise, doesn't stun because it gets eaten by the, yeah, by the hyper armor attack. And then she starts her other attacks, maybe, but she's maybe. already regaining all of her Probably poise. It's all coming back at ever. 13 poise a second. Nothing so if you don't hit for a couple seconds, then she's back at 80 and then you just totally miss out on your stun. I think, I think it's, I think it's kind of poorly designed. Like there's no way that's how it should be. But that's how it is, dude. I think in some cases, maybe that's okay. Like, on a boss like Moog. Where he goes into his hyper armor on his countdown and stuff. I think that's reasonable. But on a boss like Millennia, she should have just stunned. Like, she should've st shouldn't have had that much hyper armor where she just eats up stuns. Uh, Jose, thanks for the two-month prime stuff, dude. Part of, that's part of the reason for me why Millennia is not, like, a pop-tier boss like a, an S tier boss or something is because that issue with the game is on full display on that boss and it it decreases the quality of the fight I think even though most people would have no idea 
But yeah, because poise is such a big deal in this game, which I like. I think it's cool that there's poise break builds. The fact that she just like circumvents it for no reason. Like. Oh, uh, Yogurt, thanks for that 100 bits, dude. Why is there no alert sound for that? Go to pizza toppings. I like, I like pepperoni. I like onions. I like, um, I don't mind bacon. I don't mind black olives. I don't mind uh, peppers. Like I, I, I'm fine with most stuff, honestly. As long as you include the maple syrup, then it's all good. <laughs> Pineapple is not my favorite, but I, uh, I won't like not eat it. Dude, you guys got to try maple syrup on your pizza, dude. Especially if it's like a bacon pizza or something. But yeah, usually though, usually I'll have uh, like a garlic sauce with it or something. Gotta have a garlic sauce, man. <laughs> Sips maple syrup from the mug. Yeah, dude. I, I'm I'm not a big fan of barbecue base actually for the most part. I don't mind it, but I tomato I hundred percent prefer. Yeah, yeah, it's very similar to just like hot honey on pizza, it's like having something sweet on it, but it's just maple syrup instead. Game against Toronto. Yeah, it was it was fun for me to watch, yeah. Maybe not for the Toronto fans, but... Honestly, the thing I was the most surprised about that game was how silent that arena is, dude. It's kind of insane, right? Because it makes sense when I thought about it. But, maybe, like, that was the biggest thing I noticed. I'll give you the best it wasn't Toronto's ever. atrocious defense. It wasn't Ottawa's atrocious defense. It wasn't, like, the horrible goaltending. At least on Toronto's side. It was how silent that damn arena is, dude. It's crazy, but I guess what the reason the reason is that the tickets are so expensive and there's just a lot of like corporate people going there, right? And they don't necessarily care that much about hockey. But I couldn't believe it, dude. It's like it was silent, man. Well, it wasn't silent, but compared to other arenas, it just it seemed like it was dead, man, and it, but it, the crowd was absolutely full, like it always is, obviously, in Toronto, but... Yep, I guess that's what happens when you got the most expensive tickets in the league, and... I don't know. Uh, Chris, thanks for the brand new Prime sub, dude. Yeah, I get. I yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it is. I, I think that's definitely part of it. Not sure the whole story though, but you know I, what I was thinking earlier too is that Toronto fans are literally louder in Ottawa than than in Toronto. That's that's what I immediately thought of, right? Because you know when the Suns when the Suns play Toronto or Montreal, half the arena is fans of the other team. It, it honestly makes it, like, miserable to go to those games as a Sens fan, but... You know, obviously, like, Montreal's arena is not quiet, so... So it's mainly for Toronto, though, but, like, when Toronto comes to Ottawa, half the arena is filled with uh, Toronto fans, and they are easily louder. Like, when they score a goal in Ottawa, they are louder. The crowd is louder than when Toronto scores a goal in their own arena. Which, like, it shouldn't be like that, right, dude? Like... I gotta do something. Because it was really off-putting to watch, even. Maybe, maybe like, I, I just couldn't help but notice it. Best not ever. Uh, Whippy Poo, thanks for the Bernie Prime sub. Yeah, and it's, it's not like the Toronto fans are, <laughs> you know, it's not a fan issue. It's just who's watching those games and who's paying those for those tickets are just... Like, you gotta get the hockey 
fiends in there, dude. Not just the businessmen. You don't really give a shit. Arnold's got probably the most passionate fan base in the league, almost, dude. At least when you... Maybe not on, on an individual basis, but overall, like, probably easily, dude. Yeah, I don't really watch NBA, so I have no idea about NBA, but I could see that, dude. You know, NBA, like, my issue with N with basketball is that there's almost too many scores happening, and so they, they don't feel special, whereas in hockey or maybe, maybe soccer slash football or something, whenever a score happens, ever. it's like a big deal, and so you're kind of just, like, waiting for that moment, but basketball is just, like, there's a lot of scoring happening, so... Uh, Perfect Cannon, thanks for the Brandon Prime sub as well. Uh, the runs are all right, Swashbuckler. The we had we had one run just into Godskin Duo, and then earlier today I lost a run to Elden Beast. So like, they've been going all right, but you know, just coming up sh a little short. Yeah, that's true, Dr. Double, but but that's not, like, from a fan's perspective, though, that's not, at least for me, that's not as hype as the big moment where somebody scores a goal or something, right? Um, I, I sometimes watch international hockey, but I don't really care for it as much. Honestly, I, I watch the women's side way more than the men's side for international hockey. Like, there's the rivalry series going on right now. Canada versus US. Which is pretty good. Obviously, it's not, like, obviously it's not the same intensity as the the men's level but like still it's still good hockey to watch man like my sister played a lot of hockey and so went to a lot of her games and like there's even people that like she played with that have made it to you know play internationally and stuff uh how's it going potastic yeah whenever whenever hockey in the olympics Features NHL players, then I will care more about international hockey, that's for sure. But yeah, what's the the other there's an event that happens every year, like the World Championship, maybe that happens where there's NHLers in it, but it's all the people who've been eliminated from the playoffs. But the problem is that the playoffs are happening as it's going on, so I don't really watch it. Yeah, I got hit by Elden Beast today, Woody. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. I'll Unfortunately. Give you the best not ever. Sylvan, thanks for the one year resub, dude. Welcome back. I got I got hit to the it was the flying needles needle attack like the <laughs> the worst attack you the, the attack you do not want to see when you're fighting Elden Beast that's for sure but yeah and I, I was maybe a bit too close and I slightly arced my path when I re recently I've just been running straight straight to the side because I didn't really trust it and yeah I got clipped in the ankle but yeah it's not I mean not like it really matters though
If I if I put my heart and soul into getting that run on that attempt, then <laughs> then I would be upset. But there's a reason I don't do that. Uh, Loretta's for Rot Pots plus uh, Chilling Mist. Right card is for Assassin's Gambit and the second Shard Bearer. Like, right, right card's by far the easiest Shard Bearer on this run. It's just. You gotta go through Noble first. Which isn't ideal, but there's a lot of reason to kill Rykard, so that's why we do it. Serpent Hunter glitch? What <laughs> what glitch do you mean? Uh, pairing Noble would just be slower, so no, I don't do that. There's very few occasions where pairing Noble is like actually the better strategy, I feel like, but... Yeah, if you mean the chainsaw glitch, then yeah, that's definitely not allowed. Back to Loretta again. buffed right there probably
Oh my god, my rolls have just been, like, not at the right angle for that. Uh, Kata, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the raid, dude. That was your stream, man. Why is she doing this jump back attack so much, dude? Constantly. What a what a horrible fight this time. Like last last fight we had probably the best Loretta I've seen, and then this one just total garbage, man. Yeah, how's your uh, stream cata, dude? Okay, I'll take a bad Loretta fight over a bad Fire Giant fight. Because the last time we got a good Fire Giant, or a bad Fire Giant, but a good Loretta. So surely this time, bad Loretta equals good Fire Giant. Maybe good gods can do it as well. I wonder what gives us good Elden Beast RNG. That'd be nice to know. Or I don't get the Flying Needle attack. Uh, thanks. Thanks for the good luck, Adam. And also, uh, congrats on the bingo win, dude. You love to see that, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm drinking urine, dude. Exactly. Helps me focus during long runs, surely. Uh, we use rot plus poison plus frost plus bleed. Excellent. This 
This is definitely a fun run, man. I just I do wish there was a little bit less setup between boss fights. And I also wish Fire Giant didn't have his breath attack. But we can't always have the nice things, man. Other than that, it's pretty good. But yeah, this is our this is our third attempt today. We had our first run today was actually continued from yesterday, and I got hit on Elden Beast, unfortunately. And then last run, I just got hit on Godskin Duo, and now we're here. So the runs, I mean, they've been good runs today. Like I can't complain at all, especially like early in attempting this. And I eventually would like to do all great runes into potentially all bosses. So. You know, if, if it takes a bit longer to get any percent, but I actually learn things properly and then I get consistent at it, then there's no, like, you know, I, I have to either get consistent now or later, so it doesn't matter when. And so it could take a bit longer to get the any percent, but then when we go for all great runes, it could happen quickly or, you know, whatever. I'd rather take those hits on this run probably than when we do all great runes and add more content and then have more potential to get hit on stuff. Well, the PB is correct. It's just that's not our distance PB. Like I didn't finish that run because I don't know. Jimmy was gonna fix fire attack, but I didn't help aim with the with the butter. What the hell is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I have no idea what that means. What, was he like trying to bake some cookies and he didn't have butter or something and I was supposed to give it to him? No, we have to use every everything we use has to be plus zero uh, DBZ. Yeah, I actually have no idea, man. What that reference is to. Yeah, all, all bosses, I have no idea if it's going to be possible. But that is the eventual goal. Because, yeah, I mean, that run would be insane. It would take a long time. I, I don't know about 30 hours, but it would be probably between 20 and 30, I think. Or to just guess. Like there's not even not even any run I've done that that would be comparable to that sort of run cuz all this, all the longer runs that I've done since I've started no hit running have been like none of them have really been super uh, like hardcore low damage runs or anything like that. You know, all achievements DS3 no hit was my longest run ever, which took, you know, just over 20 hours. But it's not like it's not like I'm doing hard boss fights 10 hours into that run or something, right? I'm it's just like the God Run 3 where it's just you're going through a lot of content, but you also have a really good build. Which simplifies it, right? The longest actual, like, hard mode no hit run I've done is the master run in DS3, which is the same rules as this, essentially. All bosses, which took me, I believe it was like around six hours. Maybe like five and a half or so. And so, like, that's not even close to 25 hours, right? Like, man, I just can't even imagine at this point. Going into a late game boss 25 hours into a run with this low of damage. So that's why, like, it's going to be something new for sure.
So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll have to see when we get to that point, but all great runes, all remembrances. I, I don't think I'll do all, all remembrances because it kind of sucks. Just do all great runes first. All great runes shouldn't be any issue. And then into all bosses. Clipped by Elden Beast. Well, there's no chance I do Elden Beast that far into that run. Like, you'd have to really make sure that the the order order of bosses on that just makes certain that things that you're going to reset on more often has to be earlier. Like, you would never leave... You'd never leave a boss like Borealis. Like, imagine we do a straight-up fight with Borealis. You'd never leave that until the end because... It's just straight up RNG if we fight it normally and we don't cheese. So, yeah. Uh, Hunter, welcome in, dude. I probably wouldn't. Well, I don't know if I'd rush any percent. It's It's hard to say. I would have to determine what, yeah, I, again, like, I'd have to just figure out what the worst things on that run are. And then once I know that, then I can determine what boss order makes the most sense. Like, the order that I always try to route stuff in is, first of all, set up, right? Or, you know, what things have to come before others. And then beyond that, it's, it's, uh... It's just about the difficulty or the reset chances of a certain segment or boss. So. I guess it's pretty cool in this game that we'll we'll actually actually even have a like a choice right of what order to do things in because usually in in the other souls games like sure there's like 25 bosses in ds3 or something all bosses but you know a lot of them you kind of have to fight before getting to other ones and then like you don't really have that much choice of what order to do you have a bit but it's not crazy but in this game it you know we have so many choices to make right Yeah, Hob, Hob needs to learn how to fast travel like that, dude, because if he if he knew how to do it, he would have been able to save his run that he jumped off the cliff on or, like, missed that ledge. It's a very useful thing to know. And the, the reason why I learned it initially was doing you know, Noble Skip. And back back when I first learned Noble Skip, that was actually... So, at one point in time, I forget exactly what patch it was on, but they decreased... Or they they made a, there a slight menu delay in the fast traveling, so you couldn't just do it instantly. Um, but so, yeah, you used to be able to fast travel, like, way, way faster... But then, yeah, I, I learned it for the noble skip because yeah, I would miss that a couple times and you just fast travel out. I like kidney beans? I mean, I guess. Any infusion that I need here? Yes. 
best incant in the game? I don't know. <laughs> it depends what you're fighting. If somebody were to say that I have to beat the game and all bosses using only one incantation, what would I pick? I immediately think of Catch Flame, but Catch Flame would not be good on a lot of things, so... Like, if you wanted... Like, Pest Threads probably wouldn't be terrible, but it's also not great on a lot of bosses. So, I don't know, man. Demand repentance. Uh, Ka, thanks so much for the donation, dude. All of it. with every hit imaginable right there.
I, I, that's why I don't like using Chilling Mist here. Because it makes it so hard to see him, dude. It's very difficult to see him. Maybe, maybe I'll give you the best nut ever. Hey, Gino and Chatters. Uh, Chalk, thanks for the four month prime sub, dude. But yeah, that's the, like, that's the only reason why I don't use Chilling Mist at the start of phase two. Is it would be optimal to do it there, right? Because you you'd use that and then you would rot them and then swap to poison and stuff, but it just it makes it too hard to see. Yeah, you don't need torrent for it. It just I find torrent to be the easiest way to uh dodge that crazy spin attack, whatever it's called. Yeah, you can you can roll it. Um not sure if you can just outrun it on foot. Maybe you can. But yeah, you can just roll it. Which, honestly, like, maybe that's not a bad idea because it would allow me to control the position better. But it's, I don't know. Uh, we get the Rockeries from the this Rot Pool. There's three there. And we don't even need to go into the, the tunnel to get the one Rockeries that's there because there's just enough in that pickup. Uh, poison rot ticks keep poison keep poison from resetting. It does it not. No, they have to be like poison damage dealing hits that keep poison from resetting. It's actually a good question. I don't know how I don't know how many uh, iframes you get dismounting on torrent, but it's it's a lot. Like it's definitely more than a roll is. Yeah, and, and that's actually... The torrent dismounting iframes is a big part of how I fight Fire Giant too, right? I use them all the time. So I've actually gotten decent at, like, timing them. There's no way it's two seconds. It's <laughs> it, it's a lot, but there's no way it's two seconds. I do not believe that. Maybe, like, a second, I could believe a second for sure. I could believe a second. I can't believe two seconds, though. The roll is 13, yeah. Which is le a little bit less than half a second. In 30 FPS, but obviously... I, I don't know. We just... Usually, we talk in 30 FPS for this stuff. Yeah, Val the Indomitable is one second, and I I would believe that a torrent dismount could be very similar. Like I I wouldn't be surprised if it was even more than Val the Indomitable because it, it feels like it's so much time. is this dude <laughs> nearly got rocked in the face that would not be a good way to lose the master run that's probably the closest I've ever been to getting rocked in the face Yeah, fighting Gideon normally would be a disaster. I wonder what the best way to deal with him would be. If there's some kind of... I don't know. 
some kind of like good roll catch combo that you could actually do and not get hit while doing, but... You just have to fight him so patiently. Rich poke serpent hunter nah that that would not be the play you wouldn't first of all he's you know with the fast roll buff like he him fast rolling like it would work okay but he would just roll at a range a lot of the time but the serpent hunter also deals like zero damage so i don't think that would be the play probably Lion's Claw on Gideon? Hmm. Probably not. Like, you would want a fast weapon where you can, you know, try to get some roll catch chains together while also not getting blasted by Comet or something. Uh, Millennium, thanks for hanging out. Square off is square off is not really great on NPCs. I wonder. Um, on a normal run, probably using Cipher Pada actually would not be bad, but obviously we can't can't use that on this. Yeah, it's got that Ash of War can't be input red, right? So if you got an opening, you could, you know, it's got good range too. So you could probably chain a bunch of those together. Giant hunt him off the balcony. Are you like guessing you can do that? Or are you saying that that's actually possible? Surely that's not possible, right? What, what's really funny, a stun lock for Gideon, you can use Noble Presence, or I think that's what it's called. You can use Noble Presence, and that stun locks Gideon, but we can't use that on this run. Yeah, is Coded Sword Skill, is that, is that the exact same as Cypher Pata, or is it different? But yeah, we can't use Coded Sword either, I'm pretty sure. It's like 15 Faith, right? Maybe, maybe, I'll give you the best nut ever. Uh, Eric, thanks for the two-month prime sub, dude. Yeah, I wonder, I'm sure there's some other good Ash of Wars you could use on Gideon. I think the obvious play would be Glimplade Phalanx if they didn't, if they didn't patch that status interaction with it. Like, you would go... Actually, I guess you can't even use any. 
You can't even use any uh, buffs, though. Because I'm pretty sure that interaction only worked with the spell weapon buffs, which I don't think you can cast at level one with no stat boosting. Lifesteal Fist? Maybe, but it's unlikely. I'm sure there's something you could do. Ring finger stun lock? Yeah, I guess that's true. I don't know how long that would take, though. Master would be a great achievement, but you find it boring compared maybe, to other runs. Maybe I completely disagree. Party face. Uh, PC, uh, PSCL, thanks for the six month prime sub, dude. I think, on, honestly, I think I, I've seen people say that, like they, they, you know, they see the the title and they're like, oh yeah, this is probably really boring, but. Like, the only way I could imagine somebody saying that is if they haven't actually seen how this run goes, <laughs> you know? Because it's not like the boss fights take a mind-numbing amount of time, right? Most of them take less, like, five minutes or so. Maybe a bit more. And when you compare that to normal runs I do, where everything's scripted, like, there's no way this is m b more boring than those normal runs. There's no chance. Like if you if you go watch that Radagon fight that we had when we made it to the end of this run, there's no chance you could tell me that that is less interesting than than like my Dark Moon Greatsword run, for instance, right? There's no chance. Yeah, the f the first run, I I could understand that because those fights are brutally long, and yeah, fist run, I could understand that for sure, but. I don't think this run, man. I think this is probably by far the most interesting run I've done so far in this game. Like, once we do it. Even more so than All Boss and No Hit, right? Because All Boss and No Hit wasn't really a challenge in terms of being skilled at the boss fights. It was more just like a routing thing and then getting to the boss fights and winning once I get there. Like, by spamming Beast Jaw or whatever. Like, I think it's fun to test out weapons and do all that stuff, but... Yeah, we're not really fighting the bosses properly on, on those runs because we get so powerful. But yeah, obviously, like, you're entitled to your, your own opinion and stuff, but I, I would not be able to, like, comprehend how this would be not as interesting. Like, I think these runs are actually a good mix of, you know, making the boss fights longer. But not to the point where it's, like, just stupid long, you know? And to, to be fair, I guess some of my fights on the DS3 Master Run would have probably qualified as stupid long. Right, like, Demon Prince is, like, 25 minutes. Cinder, a good... 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so. Oh, I didn't poison infuse. That's very important. Uh, this is NG plus 7. It actually might be NG plus 8, but it doesn't matter which one. Like, this might be Journey 9. Just because I, I think in Cheat Engine, I just went to, like, the highest one. But yeah, it's, it's uh, the same anyways. Yeah, so, so maybe I should get Quick Step and try to... Maybe I'll test that later. Like, test Quick Step going through Noble Roll. But yeah, I guess the, there's something to be said. Um, especially for more... I don't know what to call them. Like, more casual viewers, I guess. Where seeing the big numbers is, like, the most fun thing. Right? 
Like, that is 100% a thing. That's why, like, some of those one-shot videos get so many views and stuff. Whereas people will do, like, long endurance kills and basically get none compared to it. So, yeah, I guess there's something, something to be said about that as well. Beautiful fight. Uh, I didn't want to do Noble Skip on this just because it. I wanted to fight Noble. Yeah, I definitely have to say, though, I, I think I prefer that arena over the Godskin Duo arena. And again, it's just, it's simply because it's it's actually flat, even though there's more pillars in the way and all this stuff. It's flat arena, which I think matters more. Funniest way I've lost a run. Mm. Funniest to who? <laughs> because I've I've lost some runs in some like pretty embarrassing ways. That you know, like are maybe funny, but not to me. <laughs> Remember one way I lost a run is there was this glitch that would happen in DS3. 
where um, I, I, I hadn't seen it in any location other than the shortcut to Twin Princes. But basically, yeah, I did the I did the Princess Stairs running section. And I got to that elevator, and as I walked into the elevator shaft, I just fell down. Like, I clipped through the ground and just died. <laughs> and then lost the run. So that was pretty funny. Like, that was funny to me and everybody else. Not just to everybody else. But yeah, I, I lost a run. I did, I was doing DS3 El Boss and no hit, SL1. So this was many years ago. Like, all these hits, those hits were many years ago. Like, the one I just mentioned. Uh, but yeah, I was doing uh, SL1 El Boss and no hit in DS3. Three. And I made it to the final boss, who was Gale. And then I died falling down the elevator shaft while trying to set up RTSR for the fight. Because I couldn't remember the setup. Because it was one of the first runs, and, and I got to him zero hit. And I, I couldn't remember the setup for SL1, and I didn't want to, like, die to fall damage or something. But then what ended up happening is I was, like, reading chat, trying to figure out what the setup was. And... I didn't send the elevator down, so I just like walked down the shaft, down the elevator shaft, and died. So that was not good. But what was good is that I got the run the like literally the next attempt, so so it was all fine. But The most angry I've ever been when I lost a run was when I was doing the level 1 plus 0 all boss no hit run in DS3. And <laughs> and then Windows like tabbed me out of the game mid Demon Prince's fight. So so we were talking like probably four ish, four and a half hours into the run or so, like near the end. Or approaching the end. And then Windows tabbed me out of the fight and then I died because I had no control over my character and I got slammed. And this was like after I basically complete, completed phase one as well. Like, I guess it's funny in hindsight, but. Certainly wasn't funny at the time. Oh, I forgot to physic and... Does, does an Exalted Flesh even do anything on this fight? I feel like my damage is the same. Do I even have... <laughs> I don't even have anything in my physic, dude. Whoops. Alright, that's one. Two. Okay, three. We should get another attack after this. And that should be cancelled into...
so I harbor you, even he would any road that we make, we hunted and with every... Was that a phase transition or? I, what do you mean? I, I, I have no idea what you mean. A uh, double spear is better on, on right card, but. I think they're both decent, but yeah, definitely double spear is better. Um, let's go here. I have a strat for this. The earthquake? I I have vowed the indomitable. If that's what you mean. No, I'm not using a... Like, I don't even think it's worth going to get Knight's Resolve or Vow the Indomitable for this. Like, it, it doesn't really... It's not really worth it. Because I can't even wield the lance, so it doesn't, like, fully buff it or whatever. Like, it doesn't... doesn't add a lot more, I guess. I actually don't even know if it matters if you can wield it or not, but... It doesn't do a whole lot. For the end, I did that one crouch poke. Really? Um, no, no, no. Like, what, what the cycle I do is, is you do weapon art into crouch poke. Um, it's just, like, if you get a stun, then it changes a bit, because then you can do, like, three crouch, crouch pokes pretty sim easily. And then... Uh, yeah, like at one point I had a drink as well, so. <laughs> you can iframe Rikard's Earthquake with Torrent. You should have been able to use Torrent in that fight. I think that would make sense, right? I feel like that would make sense. Be a pretty epic fight. Yeah, I think Elden Beast would also make sense too. I agree with that. Let's go marked. Thanks for the good luck. Uh, we've done we've done a few attempts so far. Uh, eggs. We're still like very early in going for this run though. Like our first proper attempts basically started like last stream or so, or maybe the stream before that. Thought about making Torrent available? Um, you think so? I, I don't know. They probably did. You know what? Like, it's interesting. People think on Elden Beast, Torrent would make it a lot easier or something. It really wouldn't. <laughs> right? Like, if, if you try to dodge Elden Stars with Torrent, then you're just going to get destroyed by every other attack. Also, I wouldn't even be surprised if current patch Elden Stars is actually even faster than Torrent anyways.
But yeah, think about it, right? If you're starting to dodge Elden Stars, like say you're doing the, you know, kind of meta Elden Stars dodge at this point where you get back and then go to the side and stuff. If you're trying to outpace Elden Stars and then Elden Beast starts doing the discs, you're not, like, Torrent is not fast enough to escape those. You would get hit by them, probably, I think. Unless you got really far away, maybe. But you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it would work out. But yeah, I think it would have been cool if you could use Torrent in that fight and the fight was maybe built a little bit more around Torrent. Make some of the attacks more dodgeable. Like, I, what I think would have been actually pretty cool is have fights where Torrent is, like, they... Where they design the fight around Torrent, and then maybe, like, Torrent should have jump iframes as well, so that you could jump over... Like, because, yeah, if... I Here's what I imagine. You're running away from Elden Stars. That quadruple disc attack comes out, or maybe it's five disc. I, I think it's four. That quad disc attack comes out. And then you're running away on Torrent, but then you could still jump over... Um, You could still jump over those attacks or something. If Torrent had enough jump iframes or something like that, you could time it. Like, building in Torrent into a boss fight would be would be nice, I think. Because at this point, Torrent's not really required for any fight, or... It doesn't feel like they built any of the fights around using Torrent, which I think is a mistake. Mm, I, yeah, maybe we're Dan, I guess, but I don't know. Great boomerang weapon class in the DLC. That'd actually be cool as hell, man. You could, like, throw it. Hits enemies on the way back like a lightsaber or something. Yeah, it, it would be cool if Torrent had jump iframes to a point where... Torrent can jump over attacks that the player couldn't. So, for example, Fire Giant's Avalanche... Or Rykard's Earthquake. Like, if you could do a double jump. And you got iframes on it. And you, and then you evaded those attacks. I think that would be awesome, man. That would have been a good way to work Torrent into, into boss fights, I think. Wouldn't have been hard to do, either. Not sure if we're going to be able to finish this run today, guys. I'm kind of I'm kind of tired today, man. Thirty past five too. Like we've been, we've kind of just been like doing hard attempts here, which is good. But focusing a lot. Got to get used to doing that again because it's kind of been a while since I've done runs like this before. Or yeah, it's been it's been a while since I've done a run like this where each boss fate takes a, a lot of focus and we're also doing like multiple attempts of the run, so we're going through the game numerous times and all this stuff. I think this run's also kind of exhausting too because of the amount of setup before each each boss fight. There's a lot of downtime. Yeah, Torrent can't... Yeah, exactly. Like, that's... That's what... That's the main thing that makes me realize that they did not really design any boss fight around having Torrent in it. 
I guess Torin can jump over the, the Redan gravity waves. But the player can also, right? It's not like Torrent is getting iframes. It's just Torrent can jump high enough. Yeah, I think I think that would have been cool. If they had a horse jump iframes and you could use Torrent and Rikard and Elden Beast and then they kind of work those into those into the fights. I, I, I would like the fights a lot more, I think. Yeah, dragons are a lot easier on uh, on foot. Hundred percent. Like, there's a, yeah. I see. I actually see a lot of other streamers. They like, like even in bingo. I remember people were fighting some of the horse bosses on torrent, which like it, it's so much worse. The ancient dragon ones, like maybe there's an argument there, but even then, they're still worse on on torrent for sure. I think. Yeah, I think. The best case for a torrent on a boss is currently in Fire Giant, where you can use it to, to out sprint the double fireball attack in phase two, which is really nice, or the single fireball in phase one. And yeah, and, and then you could use it to iframe those longer ranged attacks as well. I just lost all my poise damage there. Ugh, seriously, and my buff ran out. I just despise this arena so much, dude. I can't actually remember if the Ash of War is fast enough on the double swipe. I kind of feel like it's not. I don't know.
I can't remember if it's fast enough, so I'm just gonna be patient. I think it is. I'm I'm pretty pretty certain it is. I just can't remember. That was a really bad gold free fight. Like the, I I don't know. He's he's a he's a fun boss to fight and stuff, but these elevation changes make it worse, and then these pillars make it also worse. And it's just yeah, like it's all because the, all because when he gets against a wall, he um. He changes his angle on his attack, so. And then, yeah, also with the elevation changes, when you're trying to jump over certain attacks, it does mess with your, you know. When he does the when he does the stomp and you try to jump over it, if you're going up the staircase, you could potentially get hit. Please get away from there.
Oh, it's fucking poise reset. That's where the bleed grease would have uh, would have made that a bit better. Cause yeah, he you know we got he, we we want to try to get another stun there, so that we we can get a bunch of extra hits and get the bleed. But in that case, like he goes close to the wall. If he does a spam combo next to a wall, it's really bad. So I kind of have to back out, and then and then we get a fight like that where it just ends up taking way too long. One thing I need to figure out what to do is my positioning on when he does that rushing forward spin combo, like the one where I got hit on Morgoth the other day, because I, he did the, you know, the spam combo after doing it, and then my position was bad, and I was forced to go into a mud geyser thing. Um, so yeah. I need to figure out the right positioning there because I don't really like rolling backwards on this tailspin. I'm kind of awkward. But if I roll to the side like I normally do, I end up right in a, in a mud spewing thing. Well, um, I might end in a similar spot as we ended yesterday, you guys. But look at that, huh? Three runs in a row past Morgoth's pretty solid. I mean, every single run has been at least two Morgoth. I got hit once on him. Best build to finish G plus seven. There's a lot of builds, but you can't really go wrong with the Star Fist, honestly. If you wanted, you could go with like a Seppuku build or something. And, and if you wanted crazy damage, go with, you know, the White Mask plus Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Uh, playing some runs? Are you, wait, are you asking me, Pear, or somebody else? Yeah, God's Gonna Do is pretty tough on this run, but I, I, I think there's harder bosses. I think they're not the hardest boss. I think Radagon's the hardest. But yeah, the bosses that scare me the most are probably Fire Giant and, and Elden Beast because it just it feels like things are less in your control on those fights, maybe.
right? Like that, the needles is a good example. I just, I don't, I'm still not confident on some of Elden, like basically just that attack, but, but yeah, it's not, it's not a good feeling when he doesn't attack and I'm just, I'm not certain if it's going to hit me or not. Like when I was practicing the fight, I, I didn't get hit by it, but I'm still not a hundred percent convinced. And of course I get hit there, right? I, I also kind of didn't do the thing that I was supposed to do. So I'm not sure if that's exactly why I got hit or not, but. Just there's some like question marks on, on that attack with Elden Beast, which is what, what I don't like, but yeah, Fire Giant as well. Like the arena is such a big factor in the fight. And it's very hard to control his positioning because he moves around so much. So yeah, the thing with Radagon is like, if you just play it perfectly, you're not going to get hit. Like I did last fight, like I played it perfectly, so I didn't get hit, right? But yeah, definitely seems like there's more meme potential on Elden Beast and Fire Giants. Those, that's why I'm more scared of them. But yeah, with Godskin Duo, like there's definitely some unfortunate things that, that can happen, but even that fight feels more under your control than the other ones. There's somehow a ladybug on my camera right now. Snuck, it found its way inside to avoid the winter. And it's on my camera. That'd be kind of funny if it flew like right onto the lens or something. Uh, definitely making save files is the best way, tail. Make a save file and then you could just load it up whenever you want. Fight the boss that you want. Um, I think it's a ladybug, but there's a bunch of different types of ladybugs, right? I can't, I can't, honestly can't see it. So I, I, I just saw it fly on it. Not sure which one it is. Uh, yeah, if you do exclamation mark save organizer. Actually, you know what? I wonder if that link is dead now. You can try it. Can anyone check? Actually, that link might be dead now. Exclamation mark save organizer. Yeah, if anyone's not aware what happened, um, Speed Souls is dead. So that link is probably dead. Oh, does it work? Okay, well, there you go. That's nice, at least. But yeah, there's some huge, <laughs> there's some like huge drama that happened in Speed Souls, and uh, I I don't know the details. I'm not involved with Speed Souls at all, but but yeah, there's there's now gonna be like a new uh new version of Speed Souls. I don't know if they have a name for it yet. But, but yeah, essentially, like, there was some disagreement between the moderators or the staff members or something, and then the owner ended up, like, nuking them all and banning them from the server. And then they also... I thought they took down the site as well. Like, the Speed Soul site that has all the, all the fucking speedrunning information on it, all the links to all the tools and stuff. So I'm surprised the save organizer is still there. Unless maybe they, like, I don't know. I haven't been following it or anything. Like, I don't really care, but.
No, what I, I I don't know what it was over, dude. Like I I think it's just the the person who was the owner, like over the the you know has been like pretty removed from the community over the past couple of years, and basically the staff members were saying that like it'd be best if he like handed over the control of you know the Discord and the the site and all this stuff so that they could run things. And then, like, I don't know, like, and then I guess he just nuked everything, dude. <laughs> Imagine something like that happening to No Hit as well. It'd be so funny, dude. There's definitely been drama in No Hit before, but... Um, nothing to that magnitude. I'm even close, dude. Yeah, I'm sure somebody who's actually involved in the community could explain it better, but that's just what I read. Who owns no hit Discord? Um Eden was the one who created it. But I don't know if he's like still the owner or not. I have no idea. Uh, Team Hitless was started by myself, Eden, Ghost. Was there anybody else? I'm sure there are other people. I'm just somehow forgetting, dude. But yeah, we, like, I guess, yeah, we had the idea of, like, making the Discord and, and like, the site and all this stuff. And then Ghost made the site. Eden made the Discord, and then we got a bunch of people on board uh, for, like, moderations, reasons, and stuff like that, but Squilla was the, Squilla's the one who has the the Twitch team, Team Hitless, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm not really, like, I'm, I, I would say I'm still part of, no, like, the no-hit stuff, but I'm not, like, a moderator or a verifier or anything like that anymore. Um, all right, let's go over here. Yeah, that was, uh, that would have been in probably 2019, I think, Paletto. I would say, it, like, overall, it's been, uh, a good thing. Like, I think overall it's successful. Um, yeah, obviously there's been some hiccups and stuff, but... Not sure how many people are in that Discord at this point in time, but yeah, there's like a lot of good Team Hitless events and stuff, and... To be honest, there might be a drama stuff happening in there that I'm just not aware of at all, because I don't really look, but... But yeah. I'm totally not making this. Oh, just kidding. I I don't know what since I asked. I reside You've defeated a grand pleasure. Yeah, you know, it's... Well, Squilla still streams, right? But definitely not as much as he used to. And it, it's... Like, I've been streaming for a long time now, and it's... It's kind of interesting... Um, seeing all the people come and go over the years, right? Like, there have been so many people in the past that have, you know, stream no hit. We're one of the, like, OG no hitters, and then they just kind of stop streaming and coming on Twitch altogether. Oh, okay. I, I tried checking the uh, the Speed Soul site, and it actually just links me to the uh, the new Discord that they made. Cause yeah, before before like I checked it, I, I checked the Speed Soul's link, and it, it literally just said like it was a blank page, and then it said uh, I don't remember what it said. It just said like 
Speed Souls. I I, I can't remember. It, it said it just had some text at the top. <laughs> it just said some some like Speed Souls is dead or something like that. I don't know. I can't remember exactly what it said, but. Yeah, they're still doing the uh, charity marathon, yeah. Like, it, it kind of seems like things will just continue on normally, I think. But, again, I, I I don't really pay attention to Speed Souls at all. So, like, obviously, I, I follow the, like, some people that are in it. That are, like, big community members, like Kata and stuff. But I don't really, I don't really pay attention to, uh, to it that much. Same with Hitless. Like, it's the exact same with Hitless. Like, I, I really don't... Like, I follow Hitless streamers and stuff, and I... You know, people tell me when somebody gets a run or something like that, but I, I just... I don't know. I don't, like, follow it super closely anymore. And, like, watch no-hit streamers all day long, like I used to. Probably just because I I don't know. Like to take a break from the Souls games and stuff, dude. Um, okay, so we got that. But it's kind of a bad thing, actually. It, when it when it comes to just like improvement at the games, watching people is a very good way to improve. And when it comes to even no hit specifically, like when I did my first no hit runs, part of the reason why I think it didn't take me as long as it did for most people, at least at the time, was because I watched so many so many runners getting hit by certain things, and uh, like they took hits, so that well they took hits and then me seeing what hit them made me not get hit by the same thing, right? So I learned from their hits. And then... Same with strats as well. Like, if someone came up with a good strat and I was, like, paying attention to what other people were doing, then... Yeah, like, I would see the strat and then, like, I would be able to improve my route. At this point, usually people tell me, though, which is very nice. <laughs> like, usually people come in and go, like, oh, yeah, there's, there's a new strat here. And so I can still stay up to date on things, but yeah, I guess like that's probably um, like with Hob, right? Hob, you know, everyone kind of says Hob uses out of date strats and all this stuff, but it's most likely for the exact same reason. It's like when you're doing your own runs, especially if you're not like constantly testing new strategies out and stuff, then if nobody's telling you these new strats are being found and you're not watching them, then you you would just have no idea. And so. A few years of doing that, and then all of a sudden your route is like completely out of date. And so, so yeah, like that's kind of what happens a little bit. I shouldn't have went back here. Yeah, you if you, if you want to stay up to date on that stuff, it's like yeah, it's it's tough to do, man. But it also helps though when when you're if, like what we're doing right now, we're doing a run that's kind of it's not quite uncharted territory. Like people have done similar runs, but um, like we're finding some strats, but then also. I think these types of these types of runs also draw in the more serious players, right? Whether it's no hit or whatever, who also will tell me about the updated strats, right? If if they come around, so so yeah, but yeah. It didn't really used to be like that, right? When there was only a few no hit runners, when I started, um. Like, it was kind of very easy to figure out what everybody else was doing. And, uh, and there also wasn't as many strategies found at that point in time, right? 
because very few people actually even bothered to look. But now when there's thousands of people doing no hit runs in the Souls games, then things get discovered a lot more quickly. And so that makes it even harder to keep up. I guess the other thing too is when you're when you're a no hit runner who, who's been doing it for years, then you're probably also a bit more stubborn, right? <laughs> I feel like it's probably harder to not be stubborn if you've been doing it for such a long time and be like, oh yeah, there's a strat here, but I like just doing what I do. I've done for years. I I really try to not do that though, because it's not a recipe for you know being the best that you possibly can. You like see a strat that's better, but you just don't bother to take the time to learn it. How long is this run expected to take? It's about uh, three and a half to four hours or so. I don't think we're going to finish this one tonight, you guys. I maybe could, but I don't mind just starting up the run again tomorrow. Like, especially, we're probably going to get just to the same point that we were at the start of today, and then I'll... And then we'll get another attempt at Fire Giant, Godskin Duo, and beyond, hopefully. What can go wrong will go wrong. Well, it, it's not even, you know, sometimes learning a new strat isn't even to make your run more consistent. It's just to make it more efficient. Where it's like... I, I guess where it could be that learning the new strat takes a lot more effort and you only get a tiny reward for it, right? Where it's just like you run slightly faster or whatever. And so in a lot of cases like that, I think it's easy to just like kind of brush them off and like not even worry about it. But I, I do always try to like improve it, even if it's a tiny improvement and it takes a lot of effort to do it. Like I usually try to do that. But yeah, that being said, you know, it's not like I always do the most optimal strats and stuff. Especially on this run, right? There's there's a lot of boss fights where I could be, you know, there's extra punishes I could fit in or there's different ways I could dodge attacks that are technically more optimal. But for me, like on Morgoth's a good example. Uh, Like there, when doing a run like this, I, I don't think it's worth to go like crazy on every fight. Just because you're kind of like, I don't know. We're not really trying to kill the bosses as fast as we possibly can, right? We're trying to survive and be efficient at the same time. Like, I guess, yeah, it, it's basically the efficiency over speed thing. Where we want to be efficient, but our main priority is is still keeping things uh, consistent. And simplified to a point where I'm less likely to get hit. So that's the main thing. But then also still trying to be efficient at the same time. Like, sometimes doing some, like, crazy dodge strats or, or strafes on certain bosses. It's more efficient. And it's faster. But the main goal of not getting hit, like, it kind of opens you up to potentially more risk, which might not be necessary. But but, uh, but I don't know. It, it's, it's a very similar thing, actually. Right? I think it just depends on what it is for me. And yeah, usually if, the, if there is something like that on a boss fight... I'll take the time to take the time to learn it, but then like judge after I learn it whether it's worth it to do on a run or not. I'm trying to think of a, an example. Like, there, there has to be examples, dude. I just, I can't think of any right now. Um, I don't know.
Oh, okay. I guess I don't know. Like, um, for Radagon, like people were telling me about certain strafes that I could do with like the moose. Oh, actually, you know what? On Morgoth. So there's a strafe that you can do. Um, with the fist weapons by doing an R2 when he does his sort of like he runs to the left side of you, his right, and then comes across with a sweeping attack. There's a strafe that you can do. Where you like, you know, you have to be at the correct distance and then you can do an R2 with the balls and then you go underneath his weapon. But like, so so technically that that is optimized and like that's, the, you know, the better way to punish that attack and you strafe it after. But that's one of those things where if I'm just doing a singular boss kill, like if I'm just practicing the boss or whatever, then like that's fine because there's not two hours of content that I've gone through to get to that point. But... Like, I think one of those things, it's optimal, but it's just a bit too risky for a no-hit-run fight, I think, right? So that, that's kind of, like, what I'm what I'm getting at with those. Something where, yeah, it's technically optimal, but I don't think it's actually worth the added risk in that case. But it's not me just being, like, too lazy to learn the strat or something. Instead, I tested it, and then I didn't feel good about it, so I'm not going to use it, you know? Although, like, I did a bunch of boss kills on Morgoth when I was, like, changing the fighting style a little bit. And I was doing that with other, like, just on practice kills, just to try it. But. Yeah, on a no-hit kill, I don't think it's... On a no-hit run like this, I don't think it's worth to add the risk like that, right? Um, okay, what else do we need, dude? So, yeah, there's a lot of, like, bouncing stuff like that, I think, that I try to do. Jump punish on Millennium Stars. Well, I, the thing with something like that is it's, like, barely even better. So, you're adding a ton of risk for almost no reward. Like, on the Morgoth strafe thing, like, you get a direct reward, and it's certainly better to do it that way. But... You're adding a, like a pretty... I, I think you're adding risk to it because it is positioning based. And uh, yeah, I've, I've been in positions before where it's like my timing's not even bad on R2, but it just eclipsed me anyways because I'm not at the right distance. And then it's just like a, it's a bit too precise, I think, to do on a run that's all about being as consistent as possible. And speed doesn't really matter. Like I'm not trying to get a speed kill on every fight. I don't like that I aggroed that guy there. I guess I didn't rest. Yeah, speaking of millennia though, when we when we do all great runes of this run, I'm gonna learn millennia a lot better. Like, I've already practiced it a lot. Um, like, Raymond did a... Raymond did a fist kill on Millennia. I, th I, th I don't remember the exact, re like, restrictions on it, but... It was like a, a... like I think it was a level 1 plus 0 Iron Balls kill on Millennia. Maybe, I, I don't think it was on NG plus 7, but I can't remember. And, like, some of those punishes, not all of them, like, some of them are, you know... Again, it's sort of a similar thing where I think the, the risk is too high. But there's a lot of really nice, like, punishes on that that would optimize the fight. That I think, you know, they're harder to learn than what I do on her normally, but it's it's worth it. Um, it's worth to, like, spend my time learning it, I think. Which I already have, so. Alright, how's our situation here? So, we'll get three of those. I wonder if Sleeping Fire Giant could be... Worth it. <laughs> yeah, surely you did, Toast. Surely that's true. So basically, I guess the... Oh, like, I don't know. What I think the best thing to do is, if you're doing no hit... The conclusion is that I think you should try, you know, whenever there's a new strat found, um, like, 
it's worth testing it out at least. Unless, unless it's like for sure not better than what you do or something and you can guarantee it, but I think it's worth at least testing it out, seeing how it how it is. Even if you think there's a low chance you end up using it, like just learning another way to do something is a good thing. Uh, and then, and then from there you can decide whether you think it's worth it or not. But th that definitely is how you can like improve at the game, right? And this is this is basically like strictly for no hit runs. I'm not talking about like casual playthrough trying to get better or something. Yo, Jinx, thanks for the donation. I appreciate that. All of it. Well, I think we're all set up for uh, Fire Giant on this, you guys, so... I think I'm going to call it here, dude. Hockey game's on and Wait, yeah, hockey game's on probably like an hour. Like, the runs, I cannot complain at all about the runs today, man. Like, hits are going to happen, obviously. Every attempt past Morgoth, and yeah, making it to Fire Giant. And we, if we can get past God's can Duo again, I think we'll see what happens. But that's where the run gets hard, so... All right, what is up, you guys? Welcome back. Uh, and I leave myself in this position again where we're going straight into Fire Giant, dude. I'm pretty sure we're all set up. We just got to go in. <laughs> why, do I do, why am I doing this to myself again, dude? Yeah, this was this is I last stream we started we started at the same point. Going straight into fire giant. Let's go to Z's. I believe we're ready to go, dude. Uh, I did see the match, Dominico, yeah, dude. Yeah, it was a really good event. I I watched the the whole thing. not the right one. Oh yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot the bot. Whoops. Yeah, the bow the bow only video should be um like it'll probably come out in a couple weeks or so. It is in the works right now. All right, there we go. Bot should be on now. What kind of fire jam will, will we get this time? Last time, it was really bad. Like, probably the worst I've seen. Right back in, dude. Know what we like to see. Yeah, he's already stuck. Look at him. He's totally bugged out. Dude, he's totally bugged out, you guys.
not a huge fan of this positioning here. Makes it so hard to get moth light off sometimes, dude. Like right there, I just like he just runs away so much that there's just no opportunity to, to do it. That was it, it that actually wasn't a bad phase one but we just got like kind of bad attack rng i feel like a little bit but the positioning was good can't really complain Nice. Okay, I like that. Nice RNG there.
Oh no. Oh, dude. This horrible timing. Yep, there it is. There it is, dude. So, like, the problem now is that we just wasted three rot pots. So... I think... I don't know. It's probably worth going to restock on them, I guess. Yeah, that's the, that's the first time we've gotten that. Um, on one of these attempts, dude. First fire breath. I really should have tested like if if we um or after this runs done whatever like we need to test i need to test out that attack more i need to see if it's possible that we can just prevent it from happening based on range or something uh kazoodle how's it going dude No, it's not consistent to dodge. The The best way is to go in between his legs, but the fire deflects and it's just RNG, so. It's not worth losing two hours and 40 minutes to RNG. Yeah, I gotta test it more, dude. Also, like, one possibility, too, is that there's, like, a safe spot in the arena, right? Which I think is maybe the most likely thing. All right. Like, you would think if there's some, some spot, like, behind a tree that is right on the edge of the arena... That could be safe, right? Uh, Mr. Bragg Problem, thanks for the three month resub, and Hollow, thanks for the 14 month resub as well. Man, he likes this rock, huh? Wow, who are you attacking? I don't like this position because you can roll off of the rock and then lose it on your iframes. I'm just going to mothflate him now.
think it's better to do it there than to just like you know wait too long and then miss out on it Oh, and he gets... Nah, God damn it, dude. Not a good spot. Too bad. This uh, this phase, this actually was going much better than the last uh, phase one. I wonder if I should just wait for the poison or try to frost them. I would just wait. I 
okay, I guess I should have done it there, but. Yeah, there, there's still a lot I gotta test on this fight, I think, you guys. Because this fight would not be a concern if the Fire Breath didn't exist. Or if we had to wait to deal with it. But the Between the Legs strat is just, it's not really... Um, I don't know, I don't think it's... Something that you could realistically do every time, right? And... and, and Especially, um, there is still RNG with it as, like, I'm not 100% sure, but. It seems like there's RNG with the strat still. Just because, like, a fire could deflect and come back, it just does his body block it every time. I'm not sure. We got the poison. Dude, that's crazy. Oh, that sucks so much. <laughs> that's so stupid, dude. <sighs> yeah, like, uh, there's, I can't trust that, right? Like, I can't trust that he's going to die there in time. So, like, I kind of had to, but. Okay, so I, at this point. Can I afford more rot pot still? Yeah, no, like I also don't even really look at his HP bar either. So, yeah, there's not like, it's just so unlucky, dude. That's so unlucky. And like, if if he even got like one projectile off, then like, it, I don't know. That's just brutal. Okay, so in terms of. rot we've got eight butterflies we need there were i think five pickups in caleb that are free so we can get 13 or maybe it's four but so if i use three here we need four on godskin so so say we have 13 we need three here so that's 10 and then we need four on godskin so that's six and then one on Radagon, two on Horlu, two on Gideon. Uh, 
Hmm. I don't know. I guess it's t it would be more efficient for me to just use like two rot greases, except it makes it slower. Yeah, that's really too bad, man. Like, it's too bad. I, I didn't realize uh, his HP. Like, I knew his HP was really low, but I didn't know he was going to die so soon the poison, so. Not sure what I should do here. I don't know what to do because we we need like is that really enough for the rest of the run i kind of don't think it is and then i don't want to be stuck i'll just make two more rot greases i guess man and we'll go no rot pots in phase two god how many times do we have to kill this bastard man We could sleep him. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try sleeping him in phase two. dude if this one rock wasn't here in this arena it'd be so much better honestly like just that one singular rock was gone because then the main spot where you, where you fight him would be totally even ground maybe not it's not it'd be flat or not have a bunch of obstructions at least Done, maybe? Actually got a bleed before rot somehow. Huh, I guess it's not terrible, but just kind of weird. Fight's going a little differently. Double procced.
Yeah, it's too bad. I don't like this position he's in because he gets stuck on those, uh, on those, uh, trees. And if he rolls, I could get caught, so. He's got that fucking fire orb coming at me, too. Too bad we this actually started like very well. It's phase one. That's what I was fucking scared of, man. This boss, dude, is insane. This is crazy. Poison, I think, is enough to take him into phase two. Just want to get him out of those logs, because he's going to keep trying to roll and get caught on them, and I could just get killed, so. But he's spamming all these fireballs now. To prevent me from getting in. Okay, if phase two, I have to be really careful if phase two starts right now, man. It shouldn't. I actually, I, I need to get those fireballs away. Oh my God. he gets stuck on a root as well. Do not fireball. Frostbite, there we go. I wonder if two's enough.
I don't want to go too crazy. Okay, well that didn't really work out so well. I was kind of hoping we baited another attack. Just the problem is my rot grease now. Like we can do this phase without rot, but the longer it drags on, the more potential for fire breath. So I should be able to res in here. Got him. That's why the pots are so nice, because you basically skip having to do all that part. You're such a fucker, dude. Third time's a charm, I guess. Yeah, the problem with that is, like, now we're just so depleted, dude. Uh, Evie, thanks for the 62-month uh, resub. Welcome back. Uh, Wooden Spoon, thanks for the brand-new Prime sub as well. We're very depleted on our uh, rot resources, man. Let's go, Hunter. We've got six butterflies, but yeah, we can go pick up. Um, I think it's at least four more in that little section. Maybe it's five. So we should be okay as long as Godskin doesn't go like it did that other run where I wasted four rot pots on them. So, uh, FM Dud, thanks for the brand new Prime sub. I, I think there are more subs too, but. I'll go back and look in, in one second. Uh, Andy, thanks for the five-month resub. 
Primal, thanks for the sixth month in advance. I've been JB, thanks for the brand new Prime sub as well. Pair of Dice, thanks for the brand new Prime sub. And Angmar, thanks for the seven month resub. Thanks, you guys. Uh, Room Pimp, thanks for the brand new Prime sub as well, dude. Well, um, what a fight to get us back into it, dude, huh? I, like, I, we, I really need to test more Fire Giant, dude, because, like, it's honestly, I can think of a few ways that we could maybe get past the Fire Breath. Um, I also need to determine once and for all if it actually is a ranged, if there's, like, a, a certain range that you can stand at where you do not get Fire Breath, you know? Because I haven't actually properly tested that yet. Now, the the real question though is: it always is it realistic that you could like let's say Fire Breath was an attack that he only did at a certain range. And if it is, then it's a pretty close range to him, right? But let's just say it is. Like maybe it's like Aldrich, right? Where the center, of the the actual boss is sort of in a in a weird spot. Like it's I don't know. Maybe it's further back, so you actually have to be, like, really close to him to guarantee no fire breath or something. Like, let's say that's even possible. But that's how it works. Then, in order to not get fire breath, like, realistically, you're not going to be able to stay underneath him the whole time. So, I'm not sure. But, yeah, what I think could work, though, is there could be some positions along the edge of the arena where you can't get hit by fire breath, right? Because you're, like, behind a tree or something, but then... There's not terrain that the fire could deflect off of and angle towards you because you're right on the edge. That's, I, again, the problem with that idea is that realistically, are you going to be able to, like, stay in that spot the entire fight in phase two? I don't know. Uh, Kimura, thanks for the Bernie Prime sub. And Hachi, thanks for the 60-month Prime sub as well. Yeah, it's a very tricky fight, dude. And it sucks, because we basically killed him tw three times there. I think the first one had a bone out. I think we had both statuses off, and we were just working on the final one, and then, obviously, the second attempt, he, he literally died, but I had to bone out because he was just starting up his fire breath as he died. And third one was fine, but it's it feels really bad to have to bone out of that fight, man. Especially how, like, phase one is just brutal to go through. Like, phase one is far worse than phase two to deal with, so. Uh, SKC, thanks for the six month in advance sub as well, dude. Alright, so we're gonna have to go to... Uh, let's... Where do we go? Academy. Then meets Levon. Gets into the goat discussion. I think he already is, to be honest, but. But yeah, if he does, then it's it's not even he gets into the discussion. It's like he, like he is, dude, basically. I think. Or well. Um like, they're at least... I think him and John would be, like, evened out at that point. Because, like, I don't know. It, it still seems like it's impossible, but I, I don't know, dude. I think Devin actually could beat Levon still. I think he could. Even even last time, I think there was a sl small possibility. And if he's, if he's stronger this time, especially if Levon, like, isn't going to come back perfect. Like, I, I, I could easily see him winning that, dude. I could see it. We literally just spent 50 minutes on Fire Giant, dude. <laughs> 50 minutes of Fire Giant here on this run. Well, at least we're consistent at him, I guess, right? That's what that shows.
Yeah, there's, that, there's no question. I think there's some improvements I could make to Fire Giant that would make it better for this run. I think if if I could guarantee, and this, this just takes more testing, if I could absolutely guarantee that when he does the volcano attack that I cannot get hit underneath him, then think about how much of an improvement that would be, right? Because then I could go underneath. I could probably stun him. Um, like, we could start with a sleep, do a bunch of charger twos. And then go for a... Um, yeah, go for a stun while underneath him. Or at the very least, get a ton of rot buildup. And poison, potentially. And, like, that'd be huge. Instead of running away. Uh, can't touch this. Thanks for the raid. I was, uh, how was your stream? Uh, but yeah, and then beyond that, like, get, getting better at, like, if you guys noticed there, I did do the, I did the bait on the, the fire orbs where I get on horse in front of him when he cast it, and then I, I'm in the right position where I explode both at the same time. Like, if I get better at that, that'll be a nice way to speed up the fight and decrease our chance. Like, the faster the fight goes, the, the smaller the chance of getting fire breath, right? So. So, yeah, dude. There's quite a few things that I think could be better. I'm gonna go get these uh these rot things now. Well, th so there's definitely like the reason why I don't trust it is because um, I 100% have gotten hit while underneath them during that attack. But the the idea is that, like, what people have told me is what's safe, and what I've never been hit by doing is, you know, when you're at, you're at a mid-distance, basically, when he does Volcano, and then um, once he starts it up, then you go under. And then I, I haven't gotten hit. I've never seen anyone get hit by doing it that way, but like, I just don't fully trust it, right? So that's why I got to test it more. But it, it's kind of annoying, right? It's Some people say it's it's similar to the Estelle thing where there's like kind of tracking on it, but then there's kind of not. Or a few of the projectiles have tracking and then a few of them don't. I don't know, man. I, I kind of don't buy that, but. um, Fastest, easiest way to get rot super early. Well, like, if you just mean Rot Greases, there's, uh, there's Rot Greases and Caleb. Like, I pick up three on this run that are in the other Rot Pool, like, the one on the west part. Well, it's, it's not even, it's not even the Volcano Stuns under, like, his crotch that I, I've seen. It's, like, right next to his thigh. Is the ones I've seen. But again, like that was a long time ago where I was probably underneath him right when he started up, which apparently makes a difference. So, um, skills. Well, so, okay, so these are the greases here. Like these are just the weapon buff, but if you're looking for a rot weapon, uh, you can get Ansper Rapier like right at the start of the game up here by killing the NPC. more mushrooms here just while we're here too yeah and spare rapier is the weapon that basically everybody uses for rot it'd be really good on this run but i can't use it because the stat requirement is too high uh rot breath's okay but answer rapier is most likely better overall depends what you're trying to do like you're not going to go into M radagon and start rot breathing him you know No, you can you can just get rot breath. Just go to the um, communion church or whatever. Just buy it right away, in Kalid at least. Why is he not? What is wrong with him, dude? Let's go on Valence. You have to talk to him twice here. But yeah, you can also, like, the th thing that's really good about Ansper is you can also put buffs on it, right? So you could put a Rock Reese on top of it and then get even more Rot. Like, it, it's very good. I 
Phelan, thanks for the uh, 35 month resub, dude. Welcome back. So yeah, we, I I gotta I gotta work out on on, on like test fire giant more for sure. I think. But yeah, the main like the volcano isn't the main problem. The main thing is being able to deal with the fire breath, man. Like that'd be so valuable. Uh, Elfman, thanks for the thousand bits, dude. I appreciate that. Uh, how's it going, uh, Coco? Yeah, someone said I, I didn't actually see that. Oilers fired the coach. Yeah. Like how? Uh, why? How is it that other other organizations they you know they get off to a bad start? Like one season they they come off from making it to what the? Actually, did they get knocked out second round last year? I don't know. They make it to the second round, which is, like, not bad. Maybe not great for what they were expected to do, but... They come back into the next season. They lose nine games, ten games, in the first, like, 14 or something. And then instantly they make a change, yet the Sens... Like, maybe it makes more sense because they have higher expectations and stuff, but the Sens have been so bad for so long. Yet, they actually have a really good roster. And the common denominator has been coaching the entire time. Yet they still don't do anything about it. After like the third season in a row. It's actually been more than that. But third season since they've had a respectable team. Okay, maybe second. But they have a horrible start. And they just do nothing. Very frustrating, dude. Well, let's see. I mean, they're actually not doing too horribly this season compared to last. Even though they're... Losing record still, but. Our prestigious, thanks for the brand new prime stuff, dude. Okay, I think we're probably good. So, we need five of these. Four of those. Our sleep. We got those. We got the fan daggers. Probably, how many of these do I want? Probably at least two. Uh, Wild Baboon, thanks for the 14 month resub, dude. I, I'm gonna make four because we want two on Malekith anyway, so. That leaves us with. Yo. That is not enough. <laughs> oh God. That is not enough for the rest of this run, you guys. There are more I can get, but. Because two of those need to be on Gideon. I might have to, like, sacrifice Rot on one of the fights on some phase. I think we're good to go here, probably. And that's assuming this works first try, which last time it did not. Uh, Phantom Fuhrer, thanks for the, uh, Burning Prime stuff, dude. <clears throat> I'm sure that there's more I can get, but I'm kind of running out on the ones that I know of <laughs> that are safe to get. That's the problem. Okay, let me just make sure we're good here. Throwing daggers, we got... one played Phalanx. I think we're okay.
No way. That, uh, that just doesn't make sense, you guys. Oh, boy. Imagine this run dying just simply because we don't have enough rot. I, I don't understand how that... Like, Noble was right there, dude, the whole time. I, I just don't know how that couldn't have procced. <laughs> oh my god. If this fails again, like, I, I don't know. We're gonna have to go to, like, Map Genie and look at where, where more rot is. Try to try to get it, dude. God, this run is cursed. And it didn't go on a, a noble there somehow. No way. Yeah, I mean, this... I don't understand, you guys. I wonder if my, like, positioning is somehow different than when I used to do this. Yeah, we're, like, we're probably not even gonna have enough, uh... Butterflies for the rest of this run, dude. We need so many more, it's insane. Wow. Yeah, and it, it like just unbelievable. It just, and it's all just RNG too, basically, I think, man. Like Fire Giant ate six of our rot pots on him. And then here we just like I, I don't know what could have went wrong here, dude. Well, does anybody know of any more that I can get? <laughs> because Eonian Butterfly. I thought last run was bad enough. Like, if you guys remember last time, I had to go, like, scour for more uh, Eonian Butterflies as well, but... Uh, seven near inner Aeonia side of Grace... It's too bad I don't have a strat for the abandoned cave because there's a bunch in there, but there's so many enemies. Oh, oh, wait, the, the merchant, uh, okay. Okay, the merchant and Caleb. I actually, I remember we, yeah, we tested him out earlier in the run. Or not in the run, like when we were routing this. Um, I guess I have to go from here. Except I have no... I don't know if I've... Yeah, we should have enough coins. Alright, that's the next stop. Okay. Yeah, because there's five there. But I, I don't know what's going on with Godskin Duo, you guys. Like, when we were testing that strat, it, it never failed. And now, all of a sudden, it's like 50% success rates out of nowhere. I just don't understand it. Yeah, maybe we should look into a strat in Abandoned Cave. Um, to see if we can figure something out. Because, there, yeah, there's so many in there, dude. Getting them would be pretty nice. But yeah, like realistically though, I, I have no idea what's going wrong with the Godskin duo strat. I, I, I think it most likely has to do with my positioning or something. My positioning must be off. But I didn't think it was that precise. Or I knew it was precise, but it just it was working every single time. When I, when I, you know, initially tested it. I'm not sure if something's different. If like maybe the spot I'm shooting the arrow's different or my timing's off or I, I don't know. But it's very annoying. That's all I know. Oh, 
him. Dear God, well, are you these? I'm hungry. Yeah, I, I have no idea how Noble didn't rot on the first one. Like, maybe Noble started to walk away or something like that. Because no, no, if normally what happens, if anybody doesn't get procced, it's the Apostle because he's smaller and he takes longer to get to the spot. But yeah, like, maybe I'm in a bad position back here. Like, maybe I stood closer. Like, I, I have no idea, dude. Oh, <laughs> I, I didn't make the extra poison. Oops. Oh, good. At least I didn't throw a rot pot there and then realize. Certainly, uh, some improvements to be made on this on this route before we move on to like all bosses especially dude I'd have to go buy more great arrows too Like, I just shoot, like, you guys see that square? I always aim at that square. Okay, good. But it's just, I think the path that the, the godskins take isn't the same every time. That's what I think the problem is. I'm just not sure how I never saw this until, like, a few days ago. That's the part I'm confused about, and I, like, I don't know, man. Also, uh, Fox Plays, thanks for the brain and prime stuff, dude. Well... We have four butterflies, which is not nearly enough, but... Well, actually, wait a second. We need two on Gideon. I mean, it actually is enough. If, if everything goes perfectly, then it's enough, but... Like, we can't just... I don't know, dude. It just... Things don't go perfectly on this run, so... That's what it seems like. Yeah, we, we, we just need one more for Radagon, right? Because we need two pots. We already have four Greases, so we can use two here. If we get good RNG, we could actually even use one. But...
<laughs> that's not enough bleed greases, man. It's okay. It might be enough. I I've, I overlooked it because a lot of other stuff. But it, it, it like we'll we'll use one on the noble, one on the apostle. It should be okay. Certainly is not an ideal number, though. Uh, Andy, thanks for a gift note to sub, dude. Oh, to V-Sweat. Thanks, Andy. But yeah, this this is the fight where I got hit last run. This is a uh, this is a pretty tricky fight, dude.
Um, how do I do this normally? Yeah, this is where, like, I'm kind of short of bleed grease, so... Yeah, we sort of missed out on a bleed there. I wonder if it's, I, I should try to poison him instead. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, a few things got messed up because I didn't have the bleed grease there, but... Yeah, I just, I just wanted to move him back there to fight him so that I didn't have to deal with the bad terrain. That was not an ideal fight, that's for sure, dude. Not ideal. Yeah, what I could have also done is, um, it seems like I could have probably refrosted him, uh, before I woke him up. That's kind of what it looked like there, which would have killed him, probably. Uh, Genuine, thanks for the, uh, Burning Prime sub, and Dan, thanks for the 19-month resub as well. Uh, not that I know of, Croak. That'd be that'd be insanely good, though, <laughs> if that did exist somehow.
it's not really a crazy skip. Like the reason why it's it's safe to do on these runs, I feel like, is like first of all, it's not crazy precise or anything like that. But then mostly you can just fast travel out if you fall, right? So the the being able to fast travel out when you fall makes a lot of skips way more comfortable to do on a no hit run. Like same with the the sewer skip down to Moog. Like very similar thing. You could just fast travel out if you miss it. So it's like basically it's no risk. I'm sure that like same with noble skip as well, right? Like noble skip, if you couldn't fast travel out, there's no chance I'd ever even consider doing it on a no hit run, but we can. Why? What? I don't. What? I don't know what happened, to Aggie. What are you guys talking about? Um. What? He died during bird skip. Somehow. I actually don't even use Lee grease on this fight. so funny how this run like it you know it starts out I, I won't say it starts out easy but it starts out hard and then it gets really hard <laughs> by by these points in Uh, deal. Oh my god, dude.
I mean... This is the most cursed run of all time, dude. I I don't know what it is, man. Like I I I'm very surprised I didn't get a my my roll eaten there on that on that dodge. I don't know what's going on on this, dude. Uh Cutie, thanks for the 5 month prime sub. I appreciate that. I don't know what's going on, man. Like, I think it, it, my roll, my first roll actually did get eaten, but then I recognized the lag spike and then I rolled again is what happened. So, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on. Clearly, something out there does not want me to get this run right now. But... I don't know. Can't stop now, dude. Imagine making making games that perform not even just well, acceptably. Could you imagine that, dude? From soft can't. Clearly. Except for DS2. Although I'm sure if, D if DS2 released as they intended it to, I'm sure it would have had all the same problems as these other ones. With all like the lighting and stuff that they wanted. So, kind of like sacrificed looking good for performance, which I'm fine with to be honest. Uh, Tuna, thanks for the four month prime sub. I appreciate that. Yeah, this this is this is by far the most cursed run we've done of this so far, dude. Like almost everything that could go wrong has gone wrong without actually getting hit, right? Like an insane waste of rot pots, fire giant RNG. At least the phase 1 fire giants weren't too bad. Um God's can duo. Malaketh lag spikes, just everything, dude. But we're still alive.
Um, I guess we might use some Charger 2s. Oh, this this run should not be this long, you guys, dude. We just we spent. I'm pretty sure it was 40 minutes on Fire Giant, like 45 minutes, because we had to bone out twice. So, yeah, we got it. We got to figure out some stuff on him specifically, but there's other things I could probably improve too. I know. In my bones, a tarnished cannot become a lord. Not even you, a man, cannot kill a god. You know, I think last fight, I buffed with Bleed Grease on his slam. Like, is that, is that actually safe? Like, surely it is, right? I think so. It just, it's kind of been a while, so I forget, dude. Uh, Nando, thanks for the five-month prime sub, dude. I was not paying attention for a second there, dude.
This is not good. Nice. Nice. I'm going to go get this uh, butterfly down here. Three heals should be enough as well. One rot grease should be enough, I think. Should be enough. But yeah, time for legitimately just the hardest boss on this run by... Maybe not a long shot, but by enough. Should only need one. Just got to make sure we got everything here first. Got the rot. We're going to swap to this. Let's land tornado. We got enough blue flask, I think. Take this off. It should allow me to mid roll when I swap to the spear or light roll, I mean. That's what I messed up last Radagon, and like I, I kind of had to do some menuing mid fight, which isn't like ideal, but.
dude.
There we go. No problem. Nice, dude. That was that was pretty clean. That was a really nice Radagon fight this time. Last time was not so good. That was nice and a good, like, pretty good Elden Beast RNG as well. Like, no wave of gold, no flying needles. That was nice, dude. All right, master run, any percent completed. Even though the game tried so hard to... The game tried so hard to make that not happen right there. Uh, we still did it. Nice, dude. So I guess, um, I guess we're going to move on to all great runes next, probably. And you know what's funny, too, is I'm pretty sure the first part of this run, I'm pretty sure the first part of the run had snow in the background as well. So it seems like a large amount of time has passed since that, but it's been like two days. But nice, dude. Yeah, usually it's tough, I think, to take like a two day break when you're, when you're mid run. You know, you can't practice in between or anything. At least I don't. And to come back immediately into Fire Giant and all the tough bosses, but yeah, that was nice, man. That was that was pretty clean. Like, except for all the, you know, the leg spikes on Malketh and the Fire Giant bone out and bone outs and stuff. The fallen leaves. Still pretty nice. Tell a story. Of how a tarnished. Uh thanks for the uh, subs, you guys. Here, let me uh look at some of these. Yeah, this is world's first as well, I believe. So we're level one. No, no artificial level boosting. So no like Radagon Sword Seal, no Godric Great Rune, stuff like that. No upgrading any weapons or using any upgraded weapons. So all plus zero. And we are on NG plus seven. And fresh start, meaning that we basically start the run on a fresh character rather than acquiring gears from previous NG cycles and stuff. And yeah, there it is, dude. That was pretty good. It's just, yeah, we ended up spending an extra like 40 minutes on Fire Giant because we had a bone out numerous times, but... Yeah, so what we're going to do next, we're going to start doing all Great Runes. We're not going to just continue in all Great Runes now because I never like doing that. Um, but yeah, we'll do all Great Runes version of this. And then we're going to like... At the same time, we're going to be doing some run requests as well because I... You know, we were doing run requests at first. And then I like sort of put them off to do this run because I was just thinking a lot about it and how I really wanted to do it. And yeah, dude, it's fun. It's fun getting locked in like that again, man. It's been a while. Like when I did the God Run 3, there's no, there's no fights that I really just am laser focused on. I actually made one mistake on Radagon, though. I'm sure you guys saw my reaction to it. Like I, I rolled, I could have gotten killed. So I got a, like I definitely got a bit lucky on that one instance, but the rest was good. Um, yeah, dude. So run request plus all great runes version of this run. I'm not going to do all remembrances just because the bosses that all, all remembrances adds in are just not as fun. So, and like eventually I would like to do an all bosses version of this run. And uh, so, so those other bosses like Moose and, and Fort Sacks and stuff will be added into that run, but Nice, man. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy we got this today, actually, like, <laughs> to, to take a, a couple day break. You know, I feel like, at least I used to feel like I didn't do as well if I took, if I had a break between, um, like, if I, I started a run and then a couple day break and then come back to it, like, usually that doesn't work so well for me, but maybe that's not even true. Maybe that was just, like, made up in my head that it isn't that good to do. Um, all right, let me read some of this stuff, dude. Yeah, thanks so much, you guys. <laughs> Pretty efficient today, huh? We come in, stream for two hours, and just finish up the run. Um, what did I miss here? Uh, Reaper, thanks for the five month prime sub. Uh, Rifey, thanks for the brand new prime sub. Evie, thanks for the hundred bits. Maybe Evie's the good luck dude. Uh, Ill, thanks for the brand new prime sub. Co, thanks for the brand new prime sub as well. Uh, Asta, thanks for the brand new sub. Tarnish, thanks for the five hundred bits, dude. Humming Humbucker, thanks for the brand new sub. Maxi, thanks for the 1,000 bits as well, dude. And Phoebe, thanks for the 100 bits. 
Garacho, thanks for the brand new sub. Fox, thanks for the 100 bits. JK, thanks for the 1,000 bits. Thanks so much, dude. Room Temp, thanks for the 10 gifted subs, dude. Make sure, uh, make sure you thank Room Temp if you got a sub right there. Uh, Berliner, thanks for the brand new Prime sub. Evie, thanks for the 100 bits again. Uh, Lord Estes, thanks for the three month Prime resub. Uh, Tarnish from Poland, thanks for the five gifted subs. Make sure you got a sub from uh, Tarnish, you thank them. It is insane, man. Sturgy, thanks for the brand new Prime sub. Uh, no app. Thanks for the brand new prompt sub as well. There we are, you guys. Um, yeah, I, people are saying I'm not streaming on YouTube. I, it's because I wanted to listen to like normal music today, and I don't have it set up right now. And I was too lazy to do it today, where I can like stream on YouTube, and it's it's not hard to set up. It's just I have to prioritize. Like, okay, so the way I have OBS set up right now, I'm on my like Twitch profile. Um. But when I stream simultaneously, I'm on my YouTube profile, and it's a lot easier to manage the settings to add, like, the Twitch edition rather than the YouTube one. Even though it's, it's not really, that's just how I did it, so I was too lazy to set it up, so. Hopefully the YouTube people don't hate me for not streaming there today, but. Uh, Moose should be doable, I think, but I, I don't know, man. There's lots of testing that we're going to have to do for all bosses. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, WD40, thanks for the 69 bits as well, dude. Um, this run took like five attempts, you guys, or less. <laughs> it's pretty funny, dude. It's actually hilarious. But I guess it just... Yeah, but we're on Journey 9 there, by the way, I guess. Which, I guess, is technically NG plus 8. False advertising, dude. It's the same either way. I wish you did this run on like NG plus 100 so that people think it's harder. Like, the, the casual YouTube audience thinks it's like, oh, shit, MG plus 100. That's insane. But it's, like, the exact same. Anytime was 4.11, man. Like, this run should be... If everything goes smoothly, this run should be low three hours. Very easily. But the fact that we, you know, Godskin Duo, Fire Giant, those alone added easily an hour. So, that's not ideal. But, but yeah, no, what I was saying, like, we got this run really quickly. I think it just... I haven't done a lot of like these difficult runs in this game yet, but playing the game so much, it still it still helps, right? And it's not like I forget how to um forget how to do no hit runs and stuff, <laughs> you know? Like you don't you don't lose the the like play under pressure part of it, I guess, right? So But yeah, I'm I'm a little like that one mistake on Radagon though was not good though. Like I, I need to clean that up probably. Because he could have just killed me, like simply. Should probably go back and watch that actually before we move on but the rest of the run I, I i can't actually remember last time um i can't actually remember last time like earlier in this run if it was smooth or not it probably was but see this is what when people are like saying they're upset i didn't have cam on the god run three this is what i looked like the entire last like three hours that's what I look like. So it's not even interesting, dude. Like, I'm just sitting there. I guess you guys can't see now. That is what I looked like the entirety of the last, like, four hours of God Run 3. I just sit there, looking at the screen. And of course, when you're doing, when you're doing, like, leveled, things are a lot easier, right? So it's not even, like, I had to focus as much. Or I, I was still really focused, but I mean, like, there was no mistake I made that I had a reaction to, like I did here. Anybody know when this was? Also, rip the Twitch bit rate. Kind of... It's fine. Nobody cares anyways. So it's just the YouTube video is going to be a tiny bit pixelated. <laughs> yeah, like, I literally... Because I don't know what I look like, right? I don't, I don't look at myself when I'm this far in, but I, I literally just... I move my head slightly. Hey, where's that dodge? Oh, oh, oh. Where was it? I, I, I skipped it, dude. I don't record locally because I'm too lazy. Hey, let me put my camera back up. Uh, where... Did I skip it? 
Like, did... Did you guys react to it? I look like I'm mildly upset here. Is that... Is that because this was after? Oh, oh, here it is. Yeah, that's brutal, dude. That's just brutal. I I deserve to die there for sure, man. Like that's that's brutal. Yeah, like I just I just I like I just panicked there basically, dude. Yeah, that was not good. Cuz yeah, you can die like I've shown before, you can die if you like pre-roll the teleports and that's why that's why this fight is so tough, dude, is because of those teleports. And that exact mistake I made there, but I got away with it. I wonder what the odds of getting hit are, actually, if you pre-roll it every time. It's probably like, you probably have like a 25% chance of getting hit, I feel like, if he does that attack. Or like, if he does that attack, you you basically die every time, unless you, like, unless you early roll the teleport. Um, And then like, you just have enough time, because he does this attack, right? He does that attack, so... Like I feel like in my experience, probably about twenty five percent of the time, if you if you pre roll and you didn't have to roll, then you'd get killed. So, anyways, we did it. So, I'm I'm decently happy with that run. That that one mistake wasn't great, but I feel like the rest of the run was pretty clean. When we do all great runs, there's gonna be some things to clean up though. I think we gotta do some more testing on Fire Giant, um, so that I don't have to end up boning out twice. I, I didn't actually, like, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't really expecting it to, to, uh, to get this run so soon, because I thought there was still quite a bit more to improve on, but, like, I think there is, it's just I got the run maybe a little early. But now I don't know what to do today, because it's, it's only 2pm, so I'm not sure what to do. We could test some Fire Giant, maybe. Abandoned Cave, yeah, true. Yep, that's a good point. Like, because we're going to need a lot more rot when we're doing all great runes, right? Um, I got to learn Millennia better. Um, so we could do that as well. I do have a save file master run Millennia already. But yeah, so, so it, okay, we can start making splits for all great, uh, all great runes as well. So who gets added? Oh, man. It'll be interesting, actually. We're going to be adding in uh, Red Wolf. <laughs> Red Wolf of Radicon, dude. That's scary. That is scary. But I guess I can copy these splits. Um, Ranala, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's going to be problems in the, in the academy, 100%. Once we get to the actual Ranala fight itself, it should be fine. Um. Yeah, the students, though. I forget, does Rot still proc? Uh, does Rot still, like, proc when, uh, Renala's in the bubble. How's it going, Susie, by the way? Thanks for the good luck. Yeah, because the fight itself is just like, it's just being patient enough to, you know, the summons are happening and can, there's also like some stun locks I feel like you can do. Um, okay. Well, we can continue. Like, we can continue off from the save, actually, because there's no, there's no reason why, like, our build's different, right? I'm just going to make a save file there. <clears throat> 